Hello, I'm Zoe Picton Howell, a solicitor and healthcare law academic and tutor of medical education at University of Edinburgh's Medical School. In this short podcast, I'll share with you some of the key points from my paper, The Human Rights of Children with Disabilities, How Can Medical Professionals Better Fulfill Rather Than Breach Them? You can find references to all the documents I mentioned in this podcast at the end of my paper. Health professionals breaching the human rights of children with disabilities does sound dramatic, but sadly, it's all too common. Fulfilling human rights requires treating a child as a unique individual, not a type of child. Making assumptions about a child, especially prejudicial ones, can lead to rights breaches. Examples might be diagnostic overshadowing, inappropriate refusal of intensive care, failure to properly coordinate and plan care, or restricting children with disabilities access to resources. My paper explains how familiarity with the United Nations Convention on the Rights of the Child and the UN Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disability, together with knowledge of the guidance issued by the United Nations Experts Committees called General Comments, can assist health professionals in avoiding rights breaches for children with disabilities and instead help them to fulfil their rights. The formal mechanisms to enforce UN rights are largely ineffective, especially for children with disabilities. The most effective way to fulfil their rights is for those around them to be aware of those rights and to act accordingly. Article 3 of the Children's Convention requires that in all actions concerning a child, the best interest of the child shall be a primary consideration. Although not immune from criticism, the principle of the best interest of the child is used universally. Health professionals will be very familiar with it, although it can be poorly understood and applied. The Children's Convention General Comment 14 gives wide-ranging and detailed guidance as to how to ensure a child's best interests are met. Wide-ranging and comprehensive inquiry is needed. The expert committee suggests factors to consider. The child's views, wherever possible, should be properly considered. Children with disabilities should be assisted to engage. Article 12 is closely linked to this, being the rights of the child to express his or her views. A child should be able to express his or her views in accordance with their maturity or age. Guidance is given in General Comment 12. Article 12 imposes a legal obligation to respect the views of the child. There is no discretion. There is a legal presumption that a child is able to express their views, and this may be by non-verbal communication. Simply listening to the child, however, is not enough. The views of the child must be seriously considered. The whole of the Children's Convention applies to all children up to the age of 18 years, but Article 23 gives additional rights to children with disabilities to ensure they obtain the additional support they need to fully participate in the community and lead a full and decent life. General Comment 9 gives detailed guidance as to how to fulfil the rights of children with disabilities with non-discrimination being stressed. Article 23 emphasises children with disabilities have equal rights to all services alongside their non-disabled peers. Adopting the Human Rights Model of Disability, as required by the United Nations Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities, will also help health professionals avoid rights breaches. The Human Rights Model goes further than the medical or social models of disability. It recognises that some people with disabilities have to deal with pain and potentially early death as a result of their impairment in addition to dealing with the barriers created by society. Detailed guidance on the human rights model is provided in the General Comment 6 published by the Expert Disability Convention Committee. Human dignity is a core principle of the model and indeed of human rights generally. 
My paper gives some suggestions for training in human rights for health professionals. A first obvious step is to become familiar with the conventions and general comments guidance. I also recommend partnership training with rights experts and hearing from children and young people with disabilities. I make some suggestions as how these objectives might be achieved. Thank you for listening. I hope you find my paper helpful.